What's up, Benjamin? Benjamin? What's up? The whole team is here. Hey, Randy. Hey, Abe. What's oh, going on? Oh, my gosh. We saw your comment earlier, and now I got nervous. I was like, oh, my gosh. And plus, being a journalist and a writer yourself, I was like, hey, I'm what always was nervous. What made you nervous, Randy? It was just, uh, it was the legend comment. Now I'm like, I feel like I got to live up to it. And I'm like, I don't know if <laughs> I can legend, live up. <laughs> the icon, the myth that is Randy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Benjamin. We were, obviously, I can speak for myself and Abraham we were so sad to see you go because you had some legendary moments this year especially in a season that has kind of been dominated by the returnee players and you I loved we're going to get into the tribal that you kind of controlled your narrative and you're like okay let's switch things up but first thing first I want to know how did this love for Survivor get started? Was this just kind of an adventure you heard about and you wanted to go on the show or are you a diehard fan? How did this whole thing get started for you, man? Oh, Randy, when I talk about my Survivor fandom, it goes so far back that I reveal my age and all the other <laughs> contestants who were extremely young, bar say Jerry, are absolutely horrified. I'm like, folks, I've been watching since Thailand. You know, like wow. that's what season five? Not, yeah, season something. five or six, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, Australian Survivor had a few false starts before it became like the Australian Survivor that it is yeah. now. But when when it became the current franchise that it is now and the production values really upped, that very first season I was like, oh my gosh, I think I think they've pulled it off. And I got really, really invested um, to the point where, here's a bit of interesting trivia, I was originally cast on Brains versus Brawns, but then work came up and I couldn't do it. So I was like, oh, hold the fort, oh. hold the fort. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, that had to kind of, so you were super close. That had to kind of suck. Obviously work popped up, but work you popped you up. would I get out there eventually, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. But it was really interesting watching that game because Haley won that season, obviously. And I looked at that cast and I'm like, oh, I really would have liked to have played with them, but I don't think I wanted to play in the Australian Outback. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to my own country. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You you definitely definitely out there in Somalia having, um, not Somalia, I'm thinking about it, something entirely different. Uh, <laughs> Samoa, I mean... U.S. Australia, U.S. used to go out to Samoa, uh, but we haven't been there in a while. We're living in Fiji now. Now, here's my question, Ben. How did you craft that masterful tribal council where you turned it at tribal? You turned oh, a vote at tribal. About the one where I use my idol and I nudge Shani in front of a moving bus. <laughs> I just, what, it, let, let's tribal just say it kind of got it kind of got overshadowed just by the King George tribal beforehand. But we talked about this in our our recap last week. We can't leave that tribal council out. It was a week of just eventful tribal councils. So I was so impressed just to add on the Abraham's point, the fact that you went over to the the four ladies at the time and you said, "This is what I'm going to do tonight." You can either vote with me or figure your own thing out, but this is what I'm going to do. So how did that plan come to fruition for you? And how did that all go down? Oh, Randy and Abe, you flatter me. And I'm, <laughs> I'm so pleased that you see it as a stroke of genius when it was out of desperation and scrambling. <laughs> well, what, what happened there is I go into tribal very keenly aware I'm already at the bottom. And I suspect that there are going to be votes on me tonight. The story I've been fed is the votes are all on Jerry. Let's maintain tribe yeah. unity. We still love you, Ben. What happens in the background and isn't conveyed, actually, here's some gossip for you that you'll like, is that Nina, even though she doesn't completely trust me and knows that the numbers are elsewhere, we actually get along really, really well. So at key moments, she does give me intel when I'm vulnerable. And she's like, dude, the votes are on you. This never came from me. But just use that intel as you need to. Nice. That was really, really helpful. And so that night, I go in there with my idol, that I've found. And I know I've got three options. My options are Paige, because sorry, Paige, but I have wanted her out since day two. For <laughs> and she, we, we've talked about this in real life. Paige, I'm coming for since day two. Sorry, Paige. Um, it was a little bit strategic, but in fairness, she's come back and said, Ben, I was calling you a snake from day two. So all's fair in love and war. So my options are Paige because this isn't conveyed too well on screen, I don't think, but between the meat tray, Flick and Paige, that's a tight six. Paige and Flick are already talking about getting matching tattoos by this stage. Pretty sure wow. like Flick has him Paige to her wedding. The meat tray are so protective of Paige. Paige is worshipping the meat tray. It's like, 
if I go for page, they're going to go after me next immediately. I'm next out if I vote page out. So I have yeah. to strike that out. My next two options are Sherry and Shani and Jerry, which hurts because I've actually tried collaborating with them both to form a minority alliance from the bottom five. So that's mm. me, Nina, Haley, Shani, and Jerry. Obviously, not enough time to tell that story because there's enough going on in the villains tribe. You know, <laughs> there's not enough air. But when I when I've tried pitching that to to Shani and Jerry, Jerry, um, you know, we're commiserating about being underdogs, and I'm trying to win his trust. By this stage, I've never put Jerry's name down, and I've got that advantage. Mm. With Shani, I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious because we've had this moment in a hammock where I was just like let's do this five from the bottom. And she's like, I see your plan. That could work. That could work. And I'm like, okay, the others are watching us now start laughing. You're a really good actor. And she's like, ha, 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 ha. you've got a really good joke. And so I thought we were tight, but when we went into tribal, Shani said a few things that immediately made me suspicious of her. And when Paige said, I think Shani threw that challenge. I think Shani dropped the box. I'm like, okay, Sorry, Shani, but Paige has given me <laughs> I um, can't do Paige. Jerry still might be open to collaborating. I haven't known that he's turned by this stage, mm. so that's my naivety. <laughs> and so I just run with the story. And I think as much as I felt bad in that moment, I also take into account Shani wrote my name down as well. So this whole, there's, there's I think the whole perspective that Shani was an innocent victim, but I don't think that is fair to shiny. Like, I think she was actually a really good player out there. And one of my favorite memories of Survivor is before we go into that tribal, we're lining up with our torches, Shani's in front of me, and she looks behind me with the most radiant, reassuring smile. She grabs my arm, squeezes it as if to say, you're going to be okay. And I squeeze it back and give her the same <laughs> smile and say, and it's okay. you're going to be okay. Both of us in that moment intending to write down the other person's name and annihilate the hell out of them. Well, well baby, uh, let me let me just add to this. I don't know if you saw our cast assessment, but Sharni was my winner pick. And I was like, I always I always pick every time I make a winner pick, they always go out pre-merge. So I was I was a bit hurt, but that's besides the point. I do want to bring up you talked a me. little bit, <laughs> you talked a little bit about the edit here. It made it very difficult for us early on. It was interesting to hear that Flick and Paige were super tight. And we obviously know mm. about the media alliance of these of these four brutes. Who was your you know closest ally in those early days? Because that was the thing that was really, I was trying to figure out. I'm like, where does Benji fit in this tribe here? You can probably see at one point, Haley's told the votes are going to be on Ben. And she says in her confessional, Look, I'm going to do that, but I don't really want to because Ben and I are quite tight. So she and I bonded up really early on to the point where there was a point in, say, the first 72 hours, Sean, Haley, Nina and I were having a really tight four. And I was like, that's unexpected. And I think those are the alliances that work best, the ones that actually combine a skill set that people don't see coming. But for whatever reason, by the time I give the meat tray their name, uh, you know, you see this wall of protein. Perfect, by the way. Of... I mean, I don't know how you came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like I was at a butcher, Randy. So it wasn't. <laughs> but you see these four white shredded gods, right? And as much as I'm making a joke about look at them, they're they're just splendid. I'm also trying to point out to everyone, look at them. They they're throwing an alliance. And at, and at that moment, I knew at least within myself that Look, that Sean, Haley, Nina, me thing, that that is off the cards. People tend to gravitate towards who they're familiar with out there. And I don't think it was a surprise that those four would gang up because when you're in a really extreme environment, you seek familiarity. And that's probably also why I sought out Haley. You know, she she and I would have probably been on the same brains tribe if I was cast in that season um we actually read the same books coming into the show which was so weird I'm like wait I just read that novel she'd been reading the same book it was really weird um and we know we know similar people so um yeah I was strong with Haley, but Haley didn't have much currency out there because she had a target on her back from the very start so it was difficult now Ben we have to ask about King George funny story now King George was my roommate at a charity event in December. And King George, he was the greatest. 
Now, he, on a scale of one to ten, anyone like him? He's singular no, I, and just so special. No, I, I didn't think he was ever. I didn't think he. When I met him, I would have never said he would be a villain. Hmm. Now you've got a chance to actually watch episodes because we're on the different tribes. You don't get a chance to see the other episode until it airs. Now that you've seen King George in his episode leading up to before the tribe swap, how do you think he's playing the game? Oh my god, brilliantly! <laughs> I think that are places kind of for everyone in terms of what kind of creature they are. And by that, I'm I'm saying that what you're seeing is a creature in his absolute natural habitat. Do you know what I mean? Like George is actually almost custom made for this game. You could also, you can almost make George in a lab just for survival. <laughs> he knows it so, so it's well. Insane, he's, yeah. like, he's like a velociraptor in Jurassic Park. He knows all the weaknesses in the fence. He knows how to get around everywhere. And he's so impressive. And Abe, as you were asking me, like, you know, what's it like watching the game? I'm like, God, if I'd seen that tribal council <laughs> used every single person in his Greek tragedy opera, like, oh my God, I would have never have even attempted making a move on him. Um, I would have just simply been like, please don't hurt me. I mean, that was very much the vibe by the end of my game anyway. Please don't hurt me. But um, he is an impressive political operative and just one of the most cutthroat mercenaries this show has ever seen. And I, that's, that's, that's full respect to him. I was, I was kind of shocked, you know, going post tribe swap here. I was kind of shocked that you went with the heroes going into that mm. first tribal council, because I thought that was a great yeah. opportunity for you to maybe team up with George. So I'm yeah. just curious, obviously when you're out on the Island, you're going through all these situations. What if I go with this person? What if I go with these numbers? Did it ever cross your mind to possibly team up with George knowing that you were on the bottom of that heroes tribe and you talk about flick and flick page and Maddie, I think were the three heroes over there mm. with you knowing that you didn't really have that bond with those heroes did it ever yeah. cross your mind? Well, watching the show now, it does. Obviously. <laughs> but it also did genuinely cross my mind on the island because by that stage, it's so clear that I've been at the bottom of the heroes for so long. And there are some things that I know by this stage and some things that I don't know. So one of the things that I know is that Jerry's probably not a huge fan of me. I'm still not quite sure. And obviously I've thrown his best friend under the bus. Like he isn't a fan of me. Like, wake up, Ben, wake up. <laughs> um, the other thing is um, some of the things that you don't see in the show that, that I see, which is George isn't thrilled about working with me from the outset. And there's this mm. whole interesting kind of sub drama kind, kind of going on between us where I'm like, oh, I want to work with George, but I don't think he wants to work with me um, for reasons that would take a whole evening over drinks to explain. <laughs> but we'll set that up sometime. We'll set that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please, please, please. I mean, this could be a Bloody Mary if I just adjust it. <laughs> yeah. um, and the other, one of the other things as well is that, you know, there's so much cross-conversation happening during yeah. the, the challenge. Challenge. So obvious. You see, yeah, you see the shiz talking to each other a lot. You see George asking Nina information, all of that stuff. I talk to Haley um, as much as I can every time we meet up. And one of the things that Haley tells me is do not work with George. He's feeding like, completely contradicting information to you. I know that you think you want to work because George had offered me, let's let's do this. And I wasn't quite sure whether it was going to work once merge happened. And Haley's like, it's not going to work. Abort, abandon shit. <laughs> So she did have good intel, but the yeah. advice then was conveyed to me, don't work with George. I mm. probably at that point I should have seen if there was an inroad. But you can also see as the show plays out now, George is like, Ben's vote doesn't matter, actually. You know, there has to be interest from both sides in order for, for a new alliance to work. And I guess the other thing is numbers and odds. You know, when you zoom out, villains are so decimated by this stage. There is a safety in numbers. And besides throwing Shani under the bus, I'm still kind of at least got the surface impression that I could potentially be hero strong. So that's why I say, look, from this point on, I'll just be a little obedient Asian for a while and see how far <laughs> I can get. See if I fly under the radar that way after such a big, brutal move. So there are a lot of considerations, some that translate onto screen and some that don't quite. Now, now Ben, after finding your idol, you found the clue first. Then you found your idol. Now, knowing what you know, what happened with Flick, and she really didn't have an idol. I could not imagine what was going 
in your mind at this time. And I saw your confessional at the end. You was like, well, if I'd have seen the idol or seen the clue, I'd have realized that that wasn't an idol. Now, she still played it for Matt. So mm. even if you survived, coming back to tribal, what would you have said? Be like, well, you didn't play for me anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't. Look, as I said, going out, it wouldn't have made a difference. But could we have collaborated more, I think, is the mm. lesson. Like, could we have collaborated more from the start? Because looking back at the game, um, I really liked and trusted Flick a lot. And it's clear, obviously, watching that Flick <laughs> did suck me for whatever reason. But I did think it strikes me that, you know, this idol, which is this fake idol, which has passed from Simon's beautiful butt cheeks to Flick's <laughs> To to that's the that's the clip I'm using on Instagram. I have to. I have. (laughs) Sorry, Dan. And as Jonathan, as Jonathan shows me this fake idol, and remember, I am the only person on that tribe at this stage who knows what that is and how it isn't actually an idol. I was just screaming internally, very loudly inside my own brain. But I was also thinking, look, in real life, outside of the show, I'm a comedy writer. Like I work in television, and I was. (laughs) This is going to make great TV. Like, forget Shakespeare, forget Greek tragedy. Like, this is it. This idol played to try to save someone that throws someone under the bus when he's the only person who knows what it is. Like, that's that's just wild to me and really good storytelling. I mean, Ben, if we're talking about the incredible TV that you produced for us this season, it's, it's crazy. The list goes on from creating a fake idol in front of everyone from using <laughs> using sign language in a challenge which i mean bravo sir that is one of the coolest moments i think i've ever seen on the show to the tribal council that we talked about what was your favorite moment from the season as a whole your time mm. out there what what did you take away oh that that challenge where we used auslan which is australian sign language so it's different from asl but I remember on day two, Paige telling us that her mum was deaf. And I just immediately went, oh, that's good intel. And then I would start fingerspelling to Paige. And she's like, yeah, we can use this at some stage. And the fact that we got to, I never knew if that would ever come in handy. The fact that we got to in a challenge where I could swim, like swimming out to the boat, I'm like, thank you. Let us swim. I, I'm not very good at anything <laughs> else physical, but I can swim. So combining all of those things the fact that I'm a writer and could figure out the words like that made me really, really happy. And after that episode was broadcast, I can't tell you how many people from the deaf community and the broader mm-hmm. deaf community, including children of deaf adults, contacted Paige and myself um, and just said that really meant a lot to us to show that Australian Sign Language isn't just a language. It can be an asset. It can be used as an advantage in a game like this. There was one really moving message from a woman who said that she was nursing her son while watching that episode and she was crying because her son had just been diagnosed as hard of hearing. And that's such a big life-changing diagnosis to get and reframes the way that you think about your future together with your child. But the fact that she saw us use it in a triumphant way and that it meant something to her, that really meant a lot to me. Now, Ben, now that you've got a chance to play Survivor, and I must say kudos to the fact that y'all brought that to light during that challenge. That was a great challenge. Thanks, what, Abraham. What's one of the impacts that on yourself that you take away from the game and that you made on others? Because I know we just talked about the sign language, which I thought was a huge impact, but what was the impact that was made on you? I think it made me grateful for those experiences I took for granted like my my cousin Yvonne who is deaf teaching me fingerspelling all the way back when I was a little kid you know it's just something I've got in my arsenal but I was like really grateful to her and I realized actually that's incredibly useful the more kind of languages they have the more diversity of experiences we bring into into strange situations like this the better Um, and in terms of how it's made me think about myself look in some ways, I shouldn't be on this show. In some ways, like I'm not a big kind of athlete. Australian Survivor especially is pretty physical, right? Um, I, I live in the city. I'm, I, I'm not a big camping dude. And so it's reframed how the stories I even tell myself, you know, which is just like, oh, you don't like the outdoors or you don't like environments that aren't urban or you can't get along with people who aren't like you. And it's like, well, look, they may not trust you, but I can get along with them. And (laughs) um, 
And since then, like I go on massive hikes or whenever I'm in a tough situation, I've got this constant obnoxious thing that I keep saying, which is like, you slept in the dirt for 22 days. <laughs> this is nothing. This Get that nothing. tattooed right on your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. Um, and so I hope that when the audience watches as well, they might not necessarily think that they're a likely candidate for an experience like this. But I want to mm. say to them, you absolutely are. There's a place for you on the show. And the more people who are unexpected on the show, I think the more interesting it becomes for the audience too. Before yeah, we I, let you, oh, go ahead, Abraham. Well, I was going to say, Ben, uh, definitely between you and Paige, I think the audience this year learned something definitely different. Don't get me wrong now. We love the game of Survivor. We love the play of, of George. But if it wasn't for George's speech the night before, your speech would have been Survivor 101 on how to dismantle somebody at Tribal Council. Oh, this, thank you so much. It really means a lot. I'm an apprentice. I'm happy to be the king's apprentice. <laughs> from, the, from this season, I also took away from, from Benji's game, do not spend $400 on a scroll. That ends up being an onion. Oh, that was... I, that's the one moment that I forgot to mention. I know you probably don't want to hear about it. But... I know cost of living and inflation has gone up, but that is um, <laughs> that is the most expensive onion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that had to be the best tasting onion, though, out there. Uh, Benjamin, I you think I have... so Oh, go ahead. You can't... You're not, you're not allowed... They're really strict on you not being able to share rewards. So when I brought the onion back, the rest of the tribe legitimately did want to eat it with me and I did want to share it because a roast mm. onion out there is pretty valuable. So, look, it wasn't the best reward, but did I enjoy it? Well, <laughs> better at it was $400 freaking dollars. Oh, man. Benjamin, mm. I know we could sit here and chat all day with you and we would love to. I do have uh, a couple more questions real fast here. First yeah, off, we love to ask about, you know, a lot of times you guys are – big characters on our screen for us to watch, but people don't think about, you guys have normal lives outside of the game as well. And I, I wanna get into here, I saw this cause I was doing my research. Tell us about Well Mania coming out on, on Netflix. This is the next big step, right? I, I wanna hear what it's about. I, I love uh, being into the in entertainment industry. I, I wanna hear about this. Thank you so much for bringing it up, Randy. Well, Well Mania is actually the reason I couldn't do Brains versus Brawn season six alongside oh. someone like Andy League because we got the show greenlit with Netflix and it's a drama comedy where an unfit woman, happily unfit woman who's treated her body like an amusement park her entire life has to get well. Otherwise, she's going to lose the job of her dream. Dreams. And it stars Celeste Barber, Instagram's favorite clown, has more followers than Gwyneth Paltrow. She's she's that person who's always taking the piss out of like, you know, celebrity um body positive culture, but going, hey, our bodies are just bodies. Let's make fun of them as well. Let's have fun with them. And what a lot of people don't know about Celeste is she's such a good actor. So this is a show that we've made for Netflix. It comes out globally on March 29th. Um, the trailer's out now. We couldn't be more thrilled with what we've made. Um, and it's a story about survival in some ways, which is very much what we're making on Survivor 2. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put the link in the bio. Go check out the trailer. And I'm going to have to reach out for you. I'm going to definitely check this out and reach out to you after watching the, the first do. episode. And then the last question that Abraham and myself always love to ask, would you go back out there? Can we expect to see you back out there for a second time? Because you said, you know, this was out of your element to start off, but now you know you can do it. There are a lot of competing factors in my brain at the moment, Randy and Abraham. <laughs> like the, the physical scars have healed, but will the emotional scars ever heal over? The other, the other thing is, this is like a young person's game. So after Jerry, I was basically the oldest person on the Heroes Tribe, and and I kind of didn't feel like a like an old man or anything out there but it's like whoa these people are fit they're already athletes and they're in their prime would i come back as like a you know 42 43 whatever year old um i will consider it i would right. consider it but maybe but maybe it would be nice to go to fiji next time i love some more <laughs> 10 days of rain straight or whatever we experienced that was that felt incorrect to me <laughs> hey, hey ben Every day I got voted out, I pray for rain. 
<laughs> you won't if you won't if you're in Samoa. <laughs> but, but when, it, when we it's saw the lightning, <laughs> when we saw the lightning in Fiji, we was happy. We were outside. Oh um, yeah, but yeah. Benjamin, thank you so much for coming on today, man. Like yeah. I said, we we definitely got to get drinks some point in our life. Our our paths need to cross. We really appreciate it. Man. I would like that. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, when we're in each other's hemispheres, let's hit each other up. I know you can't just say you can't say King George to the U.S. and not everybody else comes by. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, oh, I'll, I'll go around saying, look, you know, King George, I'm the apprentice. <laughs> um, the <laughs> let's, let's have some drinks. I like that. Enjoy the rest of your day, man. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Abraham. Take good care.